Hello, everybody. It's uh, Lit Optimus. Talking about Cujo. Donna and Vic Trenton, along with their four-year-old son, Tad, have just moved from New York to Castle Rock, Maine. We mentioned at greater length their troubles with Tad's closet and uh, serial killer cop Frank Dodd, but only briefly did we mention the titular monster, Cujo, a St. Bernard that gets bitten by a rabid bat. The dog is owned uh, by an asshole named Joe Cam uh, Cambers? Cambers, a local mechanic who is very skilled and happens to be the guy the Trittons are trusting to fix their car. When Don and Tad get to the uh, Cambers' place, they get trapped by the rabid Cujo. There's a lot of other shit I left out because the juice of the story, the meat, is the big monstrous dog and Donna trying to save her and her baby boy. Uh, the rest of the stuff, Donna having cheated on Vic, uh, the guy she had an affair with confronting her at their house, Joe beating on his wife Charity and son Brett, Charity winning a lottery and getting Brett the fuck out of there. It's fine, but man, those tense moments with that dog is the selling point here. Definitely worth the read. I was like, come on, let's get to the dog. Uh, but it's well worth the wait. Uh, let's thank, thanks go to Natalie Titus for requesting this novel. Um, I saw the film. I don't think I saw the whole thing. I saw a lot of it. Um, I loved horror movies when I was a kid. Um, first one being Child's Play. I was terrified, deathly terrified. Um, but after initially getting over the fear of that movie, I was just like, just don't fuck with that movie. I watched literally everything else. I loved The Exorcist, and that was. It's terrifying, terrifying film. Way scarier than Child's Play. Um, Child's Play was just like deep rooted in my soul until I was like twelve. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. Um, I don't remember if I watched all of Cujo. I do remember seeing bits and pieces and seeing the dog, you know, and the fact that it's like it's a real, it's a real monster. It's a dog. He got bit. He got rabies. The end. There's nothing else to... And there's a genius part where they actually... Steven writes from the... Writes from the perspective of Cujo. Cujo's walking along. He knows that he smells the boy. He wants to go play with the boy. Um, Brett, he wants to... He, he's, he, he's trying to find some food. He really doesn't like uh, the man that much because he hits the boy, but, you know... And then he gets bit. He's like, now he's he's woozy and he's and he's feeling faint and he doesn't feel that good. And he's licking at his wounds and he kills the bat. He he gets his face stuck somewhere and then the uh, the bat bites his nose and that's how. And he's licking at his nose and he's like, then he it sh just shows how he goes insane and it's very sad because he's just a fucking dog. He didn't do anything to anybody. Um. I'm going to spoil the ending. Um, I know the film is very different. Uh, that's the main struggle, is that Donna and Tad are stuck in this car. It's it's hot. It's a fucking hot summer day. So they could both die of heat exhaustion. She really needs to like run and get a phone. But if she gets out, this big fucking dog's going to kill her. He runs up and he like bashes against the car and like the whole thing rocks. This is a big fucking St. Bernard. Those things are, they weigh a ton. There's no help. They're in the middle of nowhere. They can't call for help. It's a terrifying, realistic scenario. In the film, um, Donna and Tad get away. Um, they get help, I guess. I think um, what happens in the novel doesn't happen in the film. I know for sure. Click off if you don't want to be spoiled. Donna and Tad are saved. But they're not really because Donna Donna saved. You know, and she she feels so bad for cheating on her husband. Her husband now knows, you know, like she's been racked with guilt over their loveless marriage going down the fucking down the fucking tube. Um She's like, thank God, and now get my get my boy. And Vic is like, uh, her husband's like, babe, babe, Tad's Tad's dead. He's not breathing, honey. And they try CPR and everything. He died of heat exhaustion. Fucking crushing ending. And that's how it, that's how it ends. It's the lowest of low notes. Like, yes, she saved, but is she really? How are they gonna fucking move on from this? They're in a fucking broken marriage. Like, and they they just lost their son. 
oh, Stephen King, oh. And there were, yeah, I do remember reading and being like, okay, who cares about all this shit? But looking back, it's like, all that shit was necessary to make this a complete novel. If it had just been immediately to the dog, it would have been like, wait, what? Like, it made no sense. Um, I do have a Stephen King book ranking now. And, uh, yeah, so I, I do have a, re a ranking now. Um, I did finish It, and I did finish Misery, um, way, way shorter than, um, than It, so that was easy to get through. Uh, once I read through the guy that I'm reading through now, and I'm reading one of his novels, his only novel, um, after I move on from that, and then I'm definitely going to be reading the Chick Tracks, uh, I'm going to read all the A's, um, I'm going to read some other stuff, I'm going to get back on track to reading Stephen King. Ooh. I don't know why I had to bring that up, but I just had to. That's Cujo. Again, thanks, uh, Natalie. This book is fucked. That ending is what's really fucked. And it's such a realistic scenario. That's what makes it so... Ugh. Um, bye, everybody. Ooh, look at that.